Uh, I will tell you that that Dan Clodfelter uh, is a rare combination, and I don't. And this is not an exaggeration. He is one of the smartest guys on the planet, uh, and he is one of those kind of folks that has his feet firmly planted on the ground. You have no idea how long bore you with it. Some of the things that he accomplished as a student leader in our years at Davidson. He's been a, he's been a city council member here in Charlotte. Actually, at my request, when Commerce Lexington, I think it was then just the Chamber of Commerce uh, in Lexington, visited Charlotte in the early 90s. Danny was nice enough to come and, and speak to us. He was a council member then. He's been a, a state senator, much acclaimed here. Uh, Charlotte is really lucky to have somebody like Dan Clodfelter uh, as mayor. And I will tell you, Dan, come on up. Um, the one thing I'll say on the way, there were guys at Davidson who were tall and had hair. Um, this is not. This is not the only. <laughs> the only model we had. The difference is, I look this way then. <laughs> Still morning, uh, but I'm glad you're here. It's my very great pleasure uh, to welcome you on behalf of everyone in Charlotte. Uh, to welcome you back is what I get to say. Uh, not just to welcome you, but to welcome you back. As Bill said, um, uh, I looked a little research on it and uh, learned that in 1991, um, the members of the Louisville uh, group uh, paid us a visit, and then two years later came the delegation from Lexington. Uh, that Bill uh, just referred to, and uh, as he said, I was a city council member back then um, and spoke briefly to the visitors uh, from Lexington. I don't know what it says that you've come together this time. I don't know if you're trying to gang up on us here or, or what that means, and it really has given me a problem about what to call you. I don't know whether I call you Lexingville or Louisville or what, but I got an idea from the cheers. I think I can just refer to the combined group as the wild cards. <laughs> maybe, maybe that would work, so well, we'll see if that, uh, if that works. I will tell you this too, for the life of me, I cannot for the life of me understand why you continue to let fear on Bill Lear travel with you on these trips. I just don't know. But I'm, I'm grateful for one thing that he did in the introduction, and I will reciprocate this morning what I have to say, Bill, and that is he remembered the rule that what happened at Davidson stays at Davidson. So uh, I'll respect that too, Bill. Um, I, uh, we're very proud that you've chosen to pay us a second visit to Charlotte, and we're excited about being able to share with you the story of what's happened in this community over the 20 years that have elapsed since you were last year. Uh, or how many of you were on the earlier trips? Would you, I get to ask for a hand raises. How many of you were on the earlier trips? Wow. You're the only one. I told you, you shouldn't be carrying them around like that all the time. Um, I, I think you'll be interested to discover, if you uh, uh, know anything about Charlotte at the time of those earlier trips, that in the 20 years since then, uh, we've grown quite a bit. Uh, we are right now inside the city limits uh, of Charlotte proper. We are now double the population that we were uh, 20 years ago. Uh, at that time, we were a city of just under uh, uh, 400,000 people. We are now a city that's approaching uh, right at 800,000, and we're uh, rapidly breathing down the neck of Columbus, Ohio. Uh, we are the 16th largest city uh, in the nation as of the most recent reports. It's an astonishing thing to me to say that to you. It's an astonishing thing for me to realize that I've lived that, that my kids have grown up all through that time, in which literally overnight, uh, my city, my hometown, their hometown, has, has doubled. Your, um, your schedule is going to be bringing you uh, a number of speakers over the next few days who are far better prepared than I am to, to walk you through the details of what has happened in the last 25 years and what we see in Charlotte as being in prospect for our region in the next two decades. What I want to do here right at the very beginning of your visit is to share with you what occurred to me as I was thinking about your trip is the single most remarkable thing about your return visit to Charlotte. And then to talk a little bit about what I think that says about the city you've come to visit. And here is that striking thing for me. 
1991, when you came to visit from Louisville, and in 1993, when you came to visit from Lexington, there was not a soul in Charlotte, nor on the planning committees of your two organizations that would have dared to suggest that you come anywhere near the neighborhood that you are sitting in right now, this morning. Much less that you would think about starting out your visit to this city in this neighborhood. This was 25 years ago, a part of the city. It was then called, it had a separate name. Uh, it had a separate community name. It was called North Charlotte back then. It had come uh, to the bitter end of a path that it had been traveling since it first grew up around the textile mills in the early 1930s. It was physically separate and physically apart from what was at that time the city of Charlotte, which lay to the south across the intervening and dividing railroad yards from north to southern. You may have passed by this coming here. North Charlotte, this community, 25 years ago, was a mill village like so many across the southeast. It was a small and it was a close-knit community. It had its own main street downtown. You're just about three or four blocks right now to the south of what would be called the main street core of the center intersection of downtown North Charlotte on North Davis Street and 36th Street. In that downtown were a full range of retail shops, doctor's offices, employer's offices, pharmacies, and churches. It had its own church congregations, it had its own YMCA, and it had a uniform stock of small but well-kept housing that had been built by the mill owners around the time that the mills began to work. Life in the community at that time centered on the three big textile mills, Highland Park Mill, the Mecklenburg Mill, and the Johnston Mill. Other supporting industrial operations joined those three mills, and the community became an industrial powerhouse for the Charlotte of the 30s, 40s, 50s, and 1960s. And then you know the story. You've seen it uh, at home yourselves. There came the massive economic dislocation when the textile industry closed down and moved offshore. And the last of the three big mills in North Charlotte in this neighborhood closed in 1975, leaving what by then had become an elderly and mainly retired population, isolated and cut off from the city that had grown up around them. Now let me change for a moment. I'm going to change the setting and ask you to think about something else that was happening at that time 25 years ago in Charlotte. The time of North Charlotte's final decline. And I'm going to talk about something that was going on in the city as a whole at that same time. And I promise you I, I will connect it all up at, at the very end. Those of you who were on prior visits to Charlotte or who know anything about the history of the city may rem remember learning that Charlotte has been a city that historically has punched far, far above its weight class when it comes to private sector and public sector support, both financially and in terms of time, commitment, and energy for arts and cultural organizations. For many, many years, in the, in the end of the last century, fundraising campaigns for individual uh, organizations and for the annual combined community effort generated levels of funding that matched on an absolute total dollar basis, not just as a percentage, similar campaigns in the nation's very largest cities. These campaigns were truly public and private efforts with major government commitments as well as commitments from the entire business community. And the result was to create a resource-rich environment in Charlotte that became home to an unusually broad and deep collection of artistic and cultural organizations, not just the flagship of the symphony or the major art museums, which you may visit up on your trip, but more importantly, of countless small and medium-sized organizations. And in consequence of that rich environment of support, of infrastructure, of nonprofit groups, of government support, and of business support, the city began to attract a population of creative individuals, I'll call them artistic entrepreneurs, who considered it a good place to set up shop. And they, in turn, ignited an explosion of small-scale artistic and cultural ventures in the community. And so it happened. A lucky thing happened in the late 1980s, just before your last visit here. The arts found North Charlotte. In 1986, a young artist couple, Ruth Lyons and Paul Sires, 
discovered that the abandoned buildings in downtown North Charlotte, just three blocks north of here, were not only cheap, they were also great locations for an art gallery. And so starting with what they founded as the center of the Earth Gallery, they galvanized what has become today an unstoppable turnaround in North Charlotte. Art gallery joining art gallery after art gallery, which were then themselves joined by restaurants and bars to service the patrons of the many events that were occurring at those galleries. They then became joined by music studios and music clubs, and then by stages and theater companies that occupied every square inch of the historic downtown of North Charlotte. They rebranded the community. It's called now No Dollar or the name of the main street, North Davidson, short and formal of the community's main street. And today, poor and forgotten in North Charlotte, the time of your first visit to us is a magnet, not only for residents of the city, but also for newcomers, especially young people, who are drawn to its open and eclectic environment. All is not yet done in, in the community. The Johnston and the Mecklenburg Mills are still closed. But the Highland Park Mill, the largest, is now a thriving center for small businesses and, and business startups. Now let me come back and connect it up and tell you what I think is the lesson of that story. There was, there has been very little direct, major public investment in the turnaround that occurred in this neighborhood, in no doubt. The hard and gritty work of transforming the mill houses and the homes for a new generation of young individuals and their families. The work of converting the closed storefronts into inviting locations was done by the Booth Alliances and the Paul Sires of Charlotte. But I will tell you, that would not have happened without the powerfully supportive infrastructure that was created by the city's investment in the arts and cultural sector. That provided the government support, the business support of that sector provided the critical seedbed for the efforts of those individuals to sprout and to grow. So very often I think the best things that happen in our communities are that way. They're serendipitous. Or at least they are things that we could not have predicted on the front end by some linear path that they would occur. And the lesson of North Charlotte of NODA, I think, is that when leading private sector and public sector institutions in any community will commit to provide and sustain the necessary underpinnings, the framework for individual activities without knowing what the direct payoffs will be or when they will materialize, then virtually anything becomes possible of accomplishment for the determined and visionary citizens of a community. So here you sit at no doubt this morning you're here today, as I said, in a neighborhood no one would have dreamed you would ever visit 20 years ago. You're here due to a powerful combination of far-sighted public and private sector commitments, not to a single program or a specific project, but to a broad conception of the kind of community its leadership wanted to build, which became joined in the luckiest and happiest of ways to the drive and vision of individual citizens of this community like Ruth Lyons, like Paul Sires, and like all their many colleagues. This is the Charlotte that I'm proud to take this. I'm proud of this. The last 20 years here have seen a great many changes and new developments, but they've not been confined to the neighborhood you're in. If I had to select a single important theme for the Charlotte of the past two decades, it can be expressed in a very short phrase, massive diversification of our population, of our economy, and of our public and nonprofit institutions. Like most of the nation, Charlotte suffered greatly in the financial panic and the resulting collapse that occurred in 2008. There were some who held their breaths about whether Charlotte would even make it through to the other side of those dark times. So strong and so dominant was our financial services sector so great were the shocks to our proud, locally grown financial giants. But then we discovered a wonderful thing. Not only did we make it through to the other side, we discovered things that had been going on in our city all along that we really didn't know right under our noses. The end of the textile industry was seemingly 
but in fact, not actually, it began for North Sherlock. And neither did the near-death experiences in the financial services industry in 2008 bring the end of the story of economic success for Charlotte as a whole. We discovered in the years since 2008 that our city and our region has developed a strongly balanced and diversified economy across many economic sectors, each one of which is positioned to take positions of national and even international leadership. This is true of our energy sector where research, design, engineering, and manufacturing of conventional and alternative electric power systems and technologies dominates. It has become true of our logistics and our transportation sector, which is best illustrated by the new East Coast Rail Intermodal Facility constructed out of Charlotte Airport, which is now the sixth busiest airport in the nation. It is rapidly becoming true of our high-tech and advanced manufacturing businesses and of our exceptionally strong healthcare services, perhaps one of the strongest collections of healthcare services in the country that is not anchored on an academic medical center. And it is also true of our travel, entertainment, and tourism industry, which by 2012 had developed the muscle necessary to showcase a national political convention. Fortunately, too, it remains true of our strongly recovering financial services industry, the backbone of what Charlotte has been and will continue to be. This region's economy today is highly diversified and balanced as it could ever be desired. And it is focused in all the right segments for future global competitiveness. At the same time, our population is also dramatically diversified, both by cultural background and by ethnicity, especially if you spend any time, which you will do in the next two or three days in our center city, the faces you will encounter on the streets of downtown Charlotte today are not only the faces of a traditional southern city you would have seen on your visit 25 years ago, you will see the faces of the entire world community. Just under one in five of our citizens today is either non-U.S. born or are the first generation children of non-natives in the United States. As you would expect, the largest growth has been in populations originating from all across Latin America, giving Charlotte the distinction of having had one of the fastest growth rates in the Latino population in the nation. But equally striking are the rapid growth of communities of large communities of residents from South and Southeast Asia. Both of these two forms of diversification in our economy and in our population have been especially intense for us because of the simple fact I mentioned at the beginning of my remarks. Those two trends are embodied in and dominate among the 400,000 new people who now call Charlotte home compared to the last time you were here. In very many ways, and I think it's true to say that all of you who are returning to Charlotte for a second visit, you are actually coming to a new city for the very first time. I understand that your theme for your visit is fuel, synergize, and mobilize. And I hope you'll forgive me for bragging that you couldn't have chosen a better place to illustrate your theme. And so once again, on behalf of Charlotte, I thank you for coming. And I hope your expedition to our city will be profitable and will be enjoyable. Um, I do uh, want to call for at this point Mayor Jim Bray of Lexington and Mayor Greg Fisher of Louisville. We have uh, some memento gifts uh, that I'd like to present to you. And, and before they come up here, I also want to tell you, I I'm really sorry that you don't have time on your schedule after you finish lunch here to walk right across the street uh, up here to Amelie's. It's one of the finest French patisseries outside Paris. And so because I know you won't get that experience, I've uh, made a special uh, uh, donation to the two mayors where you have fresh homemade coconut macaroons baked this morning just for you. So if you're coming up, we've got some good gifts for you. Thank you again for your visit. I hope it's educational and enjoyable. Uh, come back and visit us anytime. <laughs>